My name is Jenna Robertson. I'm in the midwifery education program. I'm starting my third year and I have some questions for practicing midwives. What effect will hospital privilege capping have on the ability for new registrants to find jobs in Ontario? Um, so I'm wondering about with the larger graduating classes, um, if the ministry is going to keep up with the funding on the other end for new registrants as we're graduating. What opportunities are available for midwives who want to start their own clinics and what are some of the challenges that, that arise? Most people are surprised when they hear I'm a midwife. They don't, um, they don't know that we still have midwives, and they're very interested when I explain that midwifery has been re regulated profession since 1994. That we have all of midwives have privileges in hospital. That about 70% of our women will choose to give birth in hospital. And then they always say, "Are you crazy? Being on call that much? You got to be nuts." <laughs> So historically, midwifery in Ontario has really had the privilege of being supported by every government that's been in office since we started. A few years ago, they provided more money for the midwifery education program, and they have committed to providing enough spots in the province to um, provide jobs for the midwives as they graduate. Each hospital has the capacity to maintain a certain number of births between the obstetricians, family doctors, and midwives. When they reach their capacity or in terms of funding, they'll cap the number of practitioners that can work there. I think as midwifery becomes more integrated and hospitals understand better how midwives work, um, it'll be less of an issue. Um, and I don't really think in terms of big picture and long-term planning, it will really affect the ability of our graduates to get work in the province. That's the baby. That <laughs> sounds good. So for new midwives who want to start their own midwifery clinic, one thing that we did, and I was a fairly experienced midwife when we started, was we asked an, a practice that we really respected their business sense. So they had, you know, their systems down, how their contracts, their taxes, um, kind of they had been running for a while. So we actually asked them if they could mentor us. And really what that meant is we just said, you know, are you okay if we call you every once in a while and, and if you share some of your information with us and we'll be confidential about it. And I would just say, remember to go in and be patient and realize that it takes time for any business to grow and um, that it's okay to do it slowly. What they have to do is extend their toes. There we go. <laughs> How about that one? No, you're not gonna do it? I know a lot of new midwives don't want to go for a run in the park because they're worried they're going to get called and then they have to go whipping back and they don't, might not want to go to a movie or go out to dinner. And you can't live your life like that. You have to go about your life always having in the back of your mind, okay, so if I got called now, what are my plans to be able to get to the woman in a reasonable amount of time? Little things like uh, always having a spare set of clothes by the door so that you can get dressed in the dark in the middle of the night and be out the door in 10 minutes. An average midwife in her first year will provide care to 30 to 40 women, and so her salary range would be from a, from 62,000 to 83,000. It goes up so that by the time a, a midwife has maybe six years behind her, um, she'd be over 100,000 a year, about 106, and that's providing care to 40 women. It's absolutely crazy to be Anna's midwife. It was, but crazy fun. My name is Anna, and her name is Maya. You don't easily get somebody to trust you in just one appointment. Some of it I did consciously, like um, working on my Spanish with her, um, making a point of relating with her family, learning about her partner. It was a relief to see her at the hospital. When I arrived to the hospital, I couldn't really see her because I was in pain, but I could hear her voice in somewhat, you know, just hearing her voice, I felt like, okay. Now, yeah, now I can relax. Now she's in charge. You know, rely on what you know. Like trust what you know, and trust your gut. Trust your instincts around that. And if you're still not sure, remember to ask. Do reach out and use those resources for those first few births until you find your way. Until you're steady on your feet. So that's what I would say. <laughs>